Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here with another kitchen table electronics repair video that I honestly did not expect to be making, at least not this soon for this particular piece of equipment. But while I'm listening to the DJ Aaron Radio Live Blog TV show tonight, I'm sure that you can see there is a problem here with this CRL Systems TVS 3001 audio processor. Probably better go ahead and turn the sound down before the music mafia gets me. But I'll tell you what happened here, and I think that it is my own darn fault that this thing broke. Specifically, I was trying to adjust it to correct some problems that I had noticed in my audio when I was tinkering with Blog TV. I was tired at the time, and I'm not sure the problems in question actually really existed or that I was interpreting them correctly. But nevertheless, I tried to readjust and reconfigure this thing, and I broke it. Specifically, I turned one of these uh, variable resistors way too far back, and I think I actually pushed the resistive wiper off the contact wiper off the track of resistive material. So I don't think this will be too difficult of a repair. I've been through the CRL systems manual for this thing, and they're kind enough not only to provide a complete component list, but also a troubleshooting tree. And it says, you know, based on the problems that I'm seeing, one channel weak or non-existent, that I should look at the two input level controls. And I would imagine that the right channel input control is the one that I simply turned too far backwards. Fortunately, a whole bag of new ones was not very expensive at all. The only bad thing is, I really thought the bottom of this unit came off to facilitate access to the solder side of the circuit board, but it doesn't. It appears that I will have to pull the main circuit board out of it, and I will have to make careful note of where all these connectors plug in at, and if there's anything tricky about them. These, these actually look a little bit tricky back here, and I certainly don't want to have problems with those. So let me see about getting that out of there, and we'll get started with this repair. And there it is, folks, the entire working circuit board, except for the power supply and front panel sections, out of a CRL Systems TVS 3001 television audio processor automatic gain controller. It was a bit of a delicate ballet getting the circuit board to come out of here, because it sits on these studs in the case. You can actually see one right there as I zoom in on it. And you can't get your fingers in underneath the circuit board to lift up on them evenly. So the circuit board tends to bind on some of the posts and not want to come out. Now, since I've gotten the board out of here, I would recommend that you be careful with these ribbon cable connectors. There are three of them on here. This one goes to the front panel. This one back here goes to the power supply. And this one over here actually goes to the audio input and output board at the back. And some of those are quite tight. The one for the front panel has plenty of room but these other two for both power and audio are wedged kind of tightly in there and you have to be careful with ribbon cables like that because you can end up inadvertently tearing them. Now I've gone ahead and gotten my multimeter out here and taken a look at this and indeed this control for the right channel is broken but it's not broken the way I thought it would be. You see I thought it would be all the way open circuit but if it was it would stand to reason that the gain control would not function on the right channel and in reality it appears to me that it's functioning way too much, that too much signal is being directed into it. I'm not quite sure how I managed to do that because I never did turn it up. I was actually turning it down. But I don't know, maybe the entire internals of that particular control just exploded and it's in some kind of impossible state. But one thing I can definitely verify after making tests with my multimeter, this control has reasonable resistance. The two over here for the output have reasonable resistance. This one has essentially no resistance, and so my guess that the problem here is being caused by too hot of a signal going into the gain control circuitry and causing the right channel on this thing to be effectively muted. So what I've got over here is the replacement part. Go ahead and plug my soldering iron in, let it warm up. I'll remove this old part first. Then I'll go ahead and install that one. And I would hasten to point out that if you plan to do something similar, you need to know what value the part in question is. That characteristic is very important. You can't just throw any old resistor in there and expect it to work. You have to have some idea of what you should use. 
I would also like to point out something that I did not mention in my first video about this thing. These two daughter cards right here make up this unit's personality. Control how it works and things like that. In most examples of this unit, these are covered in potting compound and a CRL Systems logo is slapped on top of them, leaving nothing but a rectangular magic module. I don't know if it's this unit's late date of production, the near death of analog television at the time it was made, or just because the patents governing how this thing operated had probably expired, but they never bothered to pot these, and that's a good thing because there are some tantalum capacitors there that might need to be replaced in the future, and if the module were potted, not only could you only guess at their values, but it would be almost impossible to remove the potting compound without destroying the module itself. It can be done with a great deal of patience, but I'm not the world's most patient person, and there's no guarantee that this late in the game that CRL systems or now Orban Broadcast would be willing to provide or able to provide replacement modules should one of these fail. So it's kind of nice that they're not completely covered in potting compound and can be serviced if needed. It's also worth mentioning that these are black boxes on the schematic as well. They don't show up as to what's inside them, and for good reason, too. All right, folks. The hard truth is known with the part fully out of the circuit now. Testing it with the multimeter does indeed reveal that something went wrong with this little variable resistor. Now the new one is in its place, but it's not soldered in yet. I get a lot of people writing in in response to these videos and asking me, hey, why don't you show the soldering process? Well, first of all, right now it's fairly late at night. Second of all, I don't have any helpers to hold the camera as a result. And third of all, I don't consider myself an expert on soldering. I can do it and I can get it done. But if you want to learn to solder things properly, I strongly suggest that you look up a tutorial online. If you insist on seeing me solder something, go back and look at my mini disc player display repair videos where you can see me retouch the solder joints on the audio output jacks which were cracked on that unit. I'm going to go ahead and solder this in and clip the leads short so they don't uh, inadvertently short on the bottom of the case. And then I will go ahead and put the board back in here, hook things up, and uh, test it. Hopefully it'll be fixed. Alright, there it is folks. The new control is soldered in place and the leads trimmed. Not quite as pristine as the factory job, but it should be functional. So let's go ahead and throw this thing back together and see what happens. Now it's probably worth mentioning that these parts may be intended to be replaced in pairs, but I did not see any specific advice or prohibition in the service manual about doing so or not doing so. So I'm going to make the assumption that this thing will probably work perfectly well as long as both of those controls are set to approximately the same resistance, which they will be during the setup procedure for this unit's gain reduction functionality. Well, there you have it, folks. I haven't set up any of the output or input levels yet, but it is happy and working once again. And isn't that wonderful? Because it means I can finally return to my normal Blog TV studio location. Thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment.